Recognized, Uncle Walker, D, 0, 1, Emily of Arden, D, 1, 2, Joe Moniak, D, 0, 5, Darcy L. Ross, D, 0, 3, Evil Sands Carney, D, 0, 4, Magpie Games, D, 1, 7. Previously on Mask's actual play, story arc title, Relations. So the first thing is, as our show opens up, is we see in sort of a darkly lit metallic chamber, we see just a pod, a large cylindrical pod, and the light suddenly blinks on over top it, shining down on the pod. And then, from off screen, we hear a voice say, They are ready. Prepare to deploy the attack. And then we cut from that into a scene of jubilation and happiness. And the little scroll at the bottom probably says, what, Happy Harbor High, I believe. And, you know, we cut to probably the, the shot of all the mortarboards flying in the air and coming back down. McGann is over the moon. She is incredibly excited. She has been waiting for this moment for her entire life on Earth because this is Aww. incredibly exciting. Connor is happy that McGann is happy. And then he looks back at you and he's like, trouble? It's, uh, it, it's nothing. It's, you know, team stuff. I know things have been a little tense since that incident, but as far as I'm concerned, I want to make sure you understand. I know why you did what you did. You know, that, that means a lot coming from you. I, I just feel like, you know, it was something, it's something I had to do, you know? I still don't think it was the right choice. And Robin just turns around and stares right at him. Like, Robin overheard part of that conversation and raises the eyebrow again, like... Yep. <laughs> like, he backs, like, Superman's clearly agreeing with me kind of look on his face. Connor crushes his mortar board in his hand. Oh, my God. We have the photo click as everybody says chicken whizzy, and I'm just imagining the tableau of oh, yeah. everybody leaning away from each other in myriad directions or looking grimmer than they should, except for <laughs> Megan, who's gleeful. And so then let's go ahead and cut to the bio ship heading into the waters towards Atlantis. Calder, you're at the helm. What do you look like driving in? And what are you thinking about? He looks a little, uh, you, maybe other people have seen him go to Atlantis before, or perhaps we've gotten other shots and he's, you know, he's very confident and there's, there's sort of a tension, you know, almost like he seems nervous, like he's going to screw something up again. So it is not a smooth ride. It started to be, but as he gets closer and it's just, he's the, his little mistakes are flustering him more and more. Turbulence as metaphor for Calder's mind state. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's perfect. Kind of started to pick up on the fact that everybody else is kind of a little more tense, and she's kind of just glancing over at Connor mostly, but at everybody kind of being like, okay, what, why can't we all just, can't we all just move past this a little bit and enjoy this time? And she says to you in Atlantean, uh, as she looks up at the room and sees everybody tense, you really need to talk to Connor. I don't think Connor wants to talk. And you know what? He needs to take responsibility for his actions. It wasn't okay. He called, they calls me, he calls me while they're in danger and wants me to hack into LexCore from the cave? He, while he leans into the scene? <laughs> yes, while he leans into the scene. Oh, oh. cute. So essentially I'll, I'll lean in and I feel like I would have a nickname. So I'll say, um, Z, I have a concern. I'm not sure how I'm supposed to eat with this on. What's wrong? Something seems like it's wrong. What's going on? What's going on with you? Did you hear Superman? Yeah, I did. I know. I know. It's okay. It's okay. You got. You guys got out fine. Nobody got hurt. That's what matters, right? I agree with you. I don't know why why Robin like won't let this go. I don't know why he needed to call in everyone else. We were fine. I wish you would have told me, though. I should have been there. I should have helped. You could have called me. Connor's quiet for a second. It's like, yeah, yeah, you're right. I should have. This was a thing for me. This wasn't a mission. This this wasn't for the team. This was for me. And if you have to do something like this again, just let me know. I want I want to help you. I want to help with whatever you're trying to do. You like just a little bit of focusing and you clean it up and you pick up this request in Atlantean obviously but it says something along the lines of translated from Atlantean Mayday Mayday we are under attack 
strange figures emerging from over the ridge. They're coming in droves. We need all forces to respond to the southwest side of Poseidonis. Immediately, we are under attack. I repeat, all Atlantean citizens get to shelters. If you are part of the Atlantean Guard, get to the southwest face. Immediately, we are under attack. Any other forces who receive this message and can assist, please. Justice League, if you receive this, please. On, going on and on and on. Mayday, mayday, we are under it. Initiate part two. And we all heard that? You're at the controls, McGann and Calder. You tell me, is this playing over the speakers or is this in everybody's head? Since I don't speak Atlantean as far as I know, I probably would have broadcast it so at least Calder mm-hmm. heard. At least Calder would have heard that. Excellent. Okay, so it's it's in Calder's head or ears, and then it's up to Calder whether or not it's broadcast throughout the ship at the controls. Yeah. I, I'll broadcast it. I think, you know, even I'm above my, my petty bickering at the moment to save my city. Probably. So I'll broadcast it and quickly translate for you guys. Do any of us know who this sounds like? Do we... Do we does this sound like the MO of anyone we know? At the moment, the report is very vague and just like, it's it, the person speaking is clearly a little panicked. And they're more focused on everybody get to the place where the fighting is happening more than they are on here's what the enemy looks like. As you are coming over one underwater like ridge and mountain, you sort of see in the distance flashes coming from where you know Poseidonis to be, the outer wards and boundaries. And you see like faint trails of bubbles rising up through the water as if Mm. smoke. So I think that when that gets announced, like when Calder's like listening and like telling the group, like translating for everyone, he turns around and Robin is like, he's already geared up. You know, like when people turn around and Robin's gone, it's kind of like that. Like everybody turns around and somehow Robin has all of his gear on and ready to go. (laughs) Like before, like anybody even realizes what's happening. He's snapping his his, uh, utility belt on and and putting a rebreather in his mouth, even though he, because he forgot that Zatanna was going to do the thing. So he's just in mode he's business he's all business of course i'm immediately suiting up yeah and i mean zatanna i assume would as well she'd be finishing off the spell quickly to put it on everybody's faces so that you can get out uh after having just cleaned Mm wally's face with her clean wally's face spell and i i want to know yeah calder you're at the helm where are you taking the ship or what are you doing let's see based on what we have if possible, I'd like to kick this into higher gear, go faster, and maybe get to some kind of vantage point where we can make sure that this, if the southwest wall is where they think they're coming, I'm, I'm always suspicious that there's uh, more clever forces at work. Perfect. Okay, so that is absolutely another move. So the bio ship sweeps up into the water so you get above Poseidonis and you can like use whatever sensors it has to get an image of the area. There is a move called Assess the Situation. And that Perfect. is what you are doing. Go ahead and roll plus okay. superior, please. Let's see. An eight plus superior. Uh, so an eight. Perfect. Okay, so that means you get one question. This list is on the basic moves sheets uh, if you want to take a look at it for yourself. There are five options. What here can I use to fill in the blank with whatever you want? What here is the biggest threat? What here is in the greatest danger? Who here is most vulnerable to me? And how could we best end this quickly? And... Uh, you know, I, I'll tell you what you see, but you can ask the question and get additional information. What you see as you go higher is this sweep of tiny little humanoid figures coming over that southwest ridge, embroiled in battle with some Atlantean soldiers, like right on the edges of Poseidonis's boundaries. I think what Calder really wants to know at the moment, you know, is his queen and king in danger? You know, is is his are his friends in danger? So I think. His, his biggest question at the moment is, what here is in the greatest danger? Excellent. Okay. So these forces, just watching them from up top, watching how they're acting, they're not acting terribly intelligently, quote unquote. It's not like they're animalistic, but they're also not right. doing it tactically or strategically. They're just coming forward and brawling, punching and, and fighting. And what is dangerous about that, though, is they're also clearly strong. Just a little bit of observation means you can see these guys are overpowering the Atlantean soldiers who've come out to fight them. So what is in the greatest danger right now is this completely non-tactical attack could punch through the boundaries and wards of Poseidonis so hard that they come down. So the whole city, like, it, it wouldn't 
immediately be in danger, but the fact that the wards are down could put the whole place at risk. Oh, is that, perfect. Is that cool? That's beautiful. Is that an answer? Excellent. Okay. May I do a move as well? Absolutely. Or how do you want to do this? I have a move called Been Reading the Files. It says you, you've learned about the superhuman world through your mentor's resources. When you first encounter a superpowered phenomenon, make a roll and get some information, basically. You got it. Is that appropriate to use? Absolutely. Go for it. Yeah, I'm, I'm looking at, it's kind of scanning what's going on. I don't know, maybe something, I flip up with my visor because my mask is now on and I've got like data coming in. So I rolled a seven, but I rolled plus superior, which I just reduced, unfortunately, but I rolled a seven plus two for my superior is now a nine. Excellent. Okay. All right. So then what happens on a nine for that move? It says, on a hit, tell the team one important detail you've learned from your studies. The GM will tell you what, if anything, seems different from what you remember. So how does that work? Do you give me data, or do I make something up, or how does it work? You make up whatever you want with relation to what you are seeing before you right now, and I will tell you what's different and what's changed, uh, what is significantly not according to what you said. Okay, so my thought is that these are uh, these are Cadmus genetic engineered somethings like the first thing that popped into my head is like like maybe i've got a file or remember when i went through all the files when we were at cadmus realizing that there was some aquatic creatures that they had been working on as well and my first concern is like is that what this is and so i'm scanning for that kind of data and information to see if i'm actually right Um, that's the first thing that pops into my head that's perfect that's absolutely perfect so yes in answer to what you're looking for these figures are they match in their movements like i'm assuming you would have seen videos of this is how the proposed creature genomorph would move right there are there were proposals for an atlantean based genomorph had you ever told calder that it's a great question i i think that when we were doing this it would have been years ago right like during season one so yep. okay. i think i would have at that time i mean Just it's, it's sure. been a while i i imagine they're called sea gnomes oh gosh <laughs> So and they are showing signs. Hey, blame Greg. He, Greg Weisman did it, not mm-hmm. me. I don't. I don't know. That like the way they move, some of the some of the pieces of the suits that they're wearing, or some of the modifications you're seeing, it clearly is triggering your memories of those files of Cenomes, but not perfectly. The Cenomes were far more designed from the ground up to be like marine. They had prominent fins. Their bodies were smaller and more compact and sleeker. These right. are better, but they are still humanoid-ish. Yes, they're still much more humanoid than they are Piscean. So they're not they're not hydrodynamic as much, that kind of thing. Clearly more so than like a regular human, but more human than the sea gnomes that you saw proposed. Great. I will throw that just that they they move a lot like they move like the Cadmus G whatever they were called. They were Gtro- genomes. genomes. What were the ones that were like the hunters? I can't remember oh, their yeah. actual designation. Anyway, I'll tell you. What and I, I, look, I actually look <laughs> at Calder and I say, re- remember that file we studied, the Cenomes? That's kind of what they're reminding me of. Do you think that could be it? Uh, Calder gives a curt nod. Similar, but something, something different as well. The very wards are in danger with these superpowered constructs. Uh, we've got to help the wards up, or unless we have a way to stop the masses. So right now the bio ship is well above Poseidonus, mm-hmm. and I mean in, I'm assuming it has all manner of systems. If anybody did want to just jump out of the ship, like that is entirely within the realm of possibility. But you're watching as below the Atlantean defenders are not holding their own terribly well against these forces pushing towards those wards. It is becoming an imminent threat. Is it clear how many there are? And if not, because it's like they're kicking up you know, detritus from the bottom and stuff, and it's hard to tell how many. If that's the case, I'd ask, McGann, can you scan? Can you find out how many of these things are coming? How many of those things there are? I can try. I don't know. Can I? Is that a thing I can do? So, (laughs) this is one of those places where we can sort of permute what you would want to do into two ways. And I'm calling this out to explain mechanics, because that's always fun. Excellent. But there's the assess the situation move, which we've already seen. But that's like getting a scope of what's going on, asking specific questions, and essentially preparing yourself with intel on how to act effectively. But there's also unleashing your powers with which you can extend your senses. So this one is the one for when, uh, you know, if you wanted to hear something incredibly far away, Superboy, that would be like extending your senses. That would be unleashing your powers. It's not assess. 
because it's actually about pushing your powers to their limits kind of thing. So for instance, for you, McGann, like if you wanted to push your mind out, get a telepathic read on everything down there, that's extending your senses, that's using your powers more than it's assessing the situation. Okay. And you can absolutely do that thing. Okay. And unleashing your powers is different from like, if I, if I said, oh, I'm going to fight these mooks, you'd be like, okay, you beat the mooks. But if I said like, okay, now I want to go against, you know, Cobra, you know, or somebody important or like a bunch of like, okay, there's 50 brutal robots in this room. I want to get to the other side. That's unleashing my powers as opposed to just using them. Is that what you mean? Yes. And it might also transition into directly engaging a threat, which is another one of the moves that's about okay. when your objective is to rip through them, rip them apart. Gotcha. Really, the bar is just like, you know, previously when you cleaned up the signal. Yeah, that's you cleaned up the signal. That's it's not interesting. It's not hard. You clean up the signal. You say it, you do it, basically. Yeah, for the most part. Here, you'd be extending your mind to unknown enemies down below. This is potentially a little dangerous and iffy. So is that cool? Yes, she's going to try. She's a little uncertain because of what happened with Connor last time, but she's going to do this because it's Connor's a little uncertain. Team. So what is this? Is this? Do I roll? You'll be rolling 2d6 yeah. plus your freak okay. score. So let's see. That's six plus two. So that's eight. Perfect. Okay. And so then on an eight for uh, unleashing your powers, you do it, but you have to choose to either mark a condition, that's that angry, afraid, guilty, hopeless, insecure, or I will tell you how what you did is unstable or temporary. So it's your choice. Do you want to mark the condition, or do I get to tell you how it's unstable or temporary? How about how about you tell me how it's unstable or temporary? Yay, I love that one. <laughs> so tell me for a second, what does this feel like for you, uh, Megan? What, what are you actually doing? What are you experiencing? She's extending her mind out beyond the limits of the bioship, trying to see how far she can reach out, because her telepathic link is only within a certain distance, but she's trying to so... push it farther. And it's a little overwhelming because there are so many people and they are incredibly afraid, but she is trying her best to reach out and see how many life forces she can identify out there. How many seem hostile, Perfect. how many seem defensive. Perfect. Okay. So yeah, you're, you're extending yourself into these panicked Atlanteans and getting from them just the feedback wave of uh, fear and anxiety and the adrenaline pumping. And then on the other side is an incredibly strange experience like dipping into something that feels like a mind that's like a mind but isn't quite a mind it's full but it's not it's human but it's not it's off something's off here it's not quite right and dipping into that is incredibly disconcerting so what i want you to do is tell me who you instinctively reach out to mentally in order to balance yourself because they're going to take the brunt of this psychic backlash. Oh. I was thinking Calder might put an arm on your shoulder, like a hand on your shoulder because he knows that you're reaching out to his people who are hurting. If that, that influences your decision. Nice. I think just because Calder's closest, she'd reach out to, to who was closest to her uh, at Perfect. that moment. So yeah, it would be Calder. I'm sorry. <laughs> That good. No, this is perfect. Let's ruin Calder. <laughs> I'm a bad player. <laughs> Just love the torment. Let's ruin Calder. Our <laughs> All right, perfect. So, yeah, you you instinctively reach out to Calder for support to just vent this a little bit or to to keep you in your own head to keep this strange sensation from overwhelming you, and the sudden onslaught of this psychic feedback into Calder takes him totally by surprise. Yeah. So for this. I'm going to have Calder uh, take a powerful blow. This is another one of these moves. This is the only move in the entire game that you want to roll as low as possible. For. Okay. You would roll plus the number of conditions you have marked. Right now you have none. So you roll plus zero, and you want to get as low as possible. Uh, an eight. Okay. So on a seven and nine, you're going to choose one. You're going to lash out verbally at a teammate basically mm -hmm. venting your pain onto somebody else, kind of like what just happened to you in just an endless chain of misery. You're going to give ground, your opposition will get an opportunity, or you're going to struggle past the pain and mark two conditions. Would it be okay if uh, I said that some of the voices, I'm like, I'm, I'm getting, you know, some of these telepathic 
readings that uh, McGon is also getting, and w- one or two of them are people I know personally, and that's oh, what yeah. it's it's not just the the collective feeling of everybody. In that case, let's see what are conditions so I can get I can get a like f- afraid and things like that. Yep, there are five total conditions: angry, afraid, guilty, insecure, and hopeless. And each one will affect your moves. They give you a minus two in particular moves. Mm -hmm. And each one you get rid of in a particular way. So these are all on the basic move sheet. But just as an example, to clear guilty, make a sacrifice to absolve your guilt. To clear uh, angry, hurt someone or break something important. So whichever one you mark tells us both, it it tells us all the things. It tells us your emotional state. It tells us which moves you're going to be a little bit more shaky shaky on on. and how to get free of it. I, I kind of want to struggle past it because it. I, I think I think Calder's trying to remain strong both for his team and, and for the people down on the ground. So I think I'm going to mark two conditions, which is brutal. Perfect. I want to do it. Do uh, it. So uh, Aqualad's trying to keep it together for you guys. Uh, so I'm going to be guilty. I feel like if I had been here, if I had not chosen the life that I'm leading up on the surface, I could have helped them when I was down here. And I'm feeling afraid. I think I'm afraid. Perfect. Okay. So, yeah, it's, it, I mean, to everybody else, right, there's probably only the faintest bit of static or something, like, not really much of a clear sensation of what's happening. But to the two of you, yeah, Calder, it's that sudden onslaught that makes you guilty and afraid of people you know, friends you've had, probably, like, you know, we'd have our little vignettes because we're in the middle, like, a younger lagoon boy is down there. And he's in danger. <laughs> Aw. And trying his best to fight and not so good. Oh, no. And feeling scared for these people who are losing to this onslaught the good news on that though is mcgann you do thanks to calder taking some of the brunt of that just psychic onslaught you do get a clear read on these guys first of all they are not psychically aware they're not uh strong minds they're not thinking clearly and something else is prodding them onward you detected a psychic presence like inside of them pushing them onward Uh, provoking them to push forward and attack in this particular direction second of all there aren't a huge number maybe about like 15 i'm just going to keep it small and and this is approximate we're not worried about very specifics but not not too too many which is noteworthy that that smaller number is actually doing pretty okay yeah fight what you are especially picking up on mcgann though is every so often another one pops into existence and that's the best way to to phrase it they like you're extending your senses down there. They weren't there, and then they are there. And it's like they're coming in somewhere nearby and then surging up along that ridge to come and attack Poseidonus. And so you can pinpoint exactly where they are popping into existence right nearby. Okay. So what what do you do, McKen? Well, I tell everyone that there's about a dozen of them. They're multiplying, and they're not all there. They're like puppets. Something's driving them. I don't know what. I can't tell what, but they're not fully in control of what they're doing, I think. I'm not sure. It's weird. It's really weird. That is not enough to go go off of. We need more information. <laughs> we can't help them if we don't know. So I'm only minorly lashing out at you. I'm mostly yelling at myself. <laughs> Feel bad, Calder. Nice. Yeah. So I want to turn the camera to Connor. What are you doing, Connor? So M- McGann has like gone over next to Connor. She's like reaching out with her senses. Connor is uh, actually a you know he's feeling a little bit of trepidation as she's doing that because like remember what happened last time, and then suddenly yeah. like Calder is like reeling from psychic pain. Yeah. So this is a bad sign. But at the same time, so does does McGann say like they're they're popping up in like a particular location. Again? Like, does she relay that information? Yes, I would. There's new ones popping up all over the place. I, I don't know what's going on. I don't know how they're getting here. They're just one minute. They're not there. The next they are. That's all I can tell. I'm sorry. Wait, so, well, out of, out of character. Wait, they're not coming from one place. I thought they were all coming from one place. I don't know. I don't, I didn't, I wasn't sure. No, As out a of player, character. I'm not sure. Okay. <laughs> sure. Sure. And if, if you have that kind of question, please feel free to ask. Like, one thing I like to say on this is I am, even though I am sadistic and enjoying your angst, I'm also totally on your side. Uh, and so, like, I want to give you stuff that helps. I want to answer these questions. So, like, they're coming in from one place and they're popping into existence in that one place. So, like, you can pinpoint exactly where they are popping into existence. Okay. So, yes. 
I am. I tell them that. I tell okay. them where that is. So then Connor Connor remembers Black Canary's training and what what he wants to do right now, right? There's just so much tension in this tiny ship. What he wants to do is just like leap out into the water and just land in the middle of the scrum and just start smashing things because that helps clear his head. But maybe, he says, if they're just going to keep coming, then it doesn't matter how many like we put down. Maybe we should go to the source and plug this leak. Nice. He says to the others. No, that's uh, that's great. Yeah, so Connor proposes going forward and, and plugging the leak. Uh, I want to cut the camera to Wally, because we haven't seen Wally in a little bit. Wally, what are you doing? So uh, I've been waiting to hear something along those lines. So as soon as Connor suggests it, even with everything the way it is, I look to Calder to just make sure that that's what he's going to say. Because at the end of the day, ah. he's still team leader, and I respect that enough. I mean, not to... I'm not going to not joke about things, but uh, and listen to all the criticism that I got earlier on. But I'm still going to look to Calder as team leader and see if that's OK. And then I'm ready to go. I also don't have my suit. Awesome. I've determined that as well, because I thought this was a vacation. <laughs> so, like, I'm just going to like, yeah, got I'm just going to have trunks. And then we're going to do the whole fight with a bubble mask and trunks. I also totally wrote down how Zatanna would say um, Ekof Sila Nelk and I'm mouthing it as she cleans my face because I've heard her say it so many times. So many times. <laughs> because I can That's envision amazing. double dates with um, Zatanna and Robin and Artemis and uh, Kid Flash and then it's just something I've heard countless times. <laughs> Artemis is so grateful. That's perfect. She grinned. So grateful. Yeah. <laughs> Calder looks really insecure for a second and really, really afraid, but then sort of his face sets and he gives a, a curt nod to Connor. I, I think internally he's he's trying to uh, atone for things, so uh, he really wants to throw himself into the fray as well. Nice. And forgo, you know, self-security. Uh, so, Magan, can you take the bio ship as fast as it will go so that we may stop the blood of uh, assailants? Absolutely. All right. So, we are hitting a move. When you enter a battle against the dangerous foe as a team, this is how we prime the team pool and put some points in for y'all to play with. So, first up, we add two, just straight up. So, there are four teams in the pool right now. Then, my first question, who is the leader right now? And I ask this always because we can have an official team leader and say that person is the leader, but it's always an in-the-moment thing that we figure out because that person may not actually be the leader in that specific moment. So right now, who is the leader? Kind of feel like Connor. But yeah. Yeah, prob- probably. I have a move. I don't think it's it's called captain when you enter battle as a team, add extra team to the pool and carry plus one forward if you're the leader, that kind of thing. The thing is, I don't think I mean, what is technically the definition of entering as a team? It seems like we're a little rough around the edges right now, so and I don't know if anybody would listen to Robin right now, that kind of thing. So how does this work? I mean, it, it comes down to you You are definitely right now, I'm calling it as entering a battle as a team because you all together are entering and there are other pieces of this move that will trigger based on you being frayed at the edges. So that your move, Captain, would trigger right now if the team agrees that you are the leader right here, right now. I think my thing is I'm hearing that that's not exactly the case because mm-hmm. calder you said connor sounds like the leader like you're following connor's yep. lead actually but and wally mm-hmm. specifically looked at calder so it didn't sound like anybody is specifically following robin's lead is that a correct read yeah i think everybody probably reacts to that like agreeing that it's connor and i turn and look at connor and i'm like okay nice yes. okay great all right better make some good decisions is the look on my face <laughs> Connor was going to support Calder, but Calder looks like he's reticent. And yeah, and Connor Connor heard they called the Justice League. But you know what? We don't need the league. We can handle this on our own. He looks over at Robin. Robin's shaking his head and he's like, Yeah, okay, let's do let's plug this leak. Excellent. There's no time for the Justice League. Alright, so Connor's leader. Sorry, Ishan, so doesn't Connor have some stuff about me being his rival and like there's some moves based on like making me upset or something like that. Oh, yeah, like when I intentionally provoke you or something <laughs> yeah. like that. Oh, but that's trying to provoke you into rash or poorly thought out action. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Later. <laughs> later. Later. Sounds good. Awesome. Not when we might get murdered. 
to make sure I call it out too, so that you have it in your head, you will take plus one ongoing to any action that impresses your love or frustrates your rival. Well, you're frustrating Ooh. me right now, so being good a good job, being a good leader. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Connor is the leader. So, question number one: Does the leader have influence over every other teammate? Do you have influence, Connor, over Wally, McGann, Calder, and Robin? Everyone, no. Okay, you do not. All right. Does everyone have the same purpose in the fight? So, Connor, I'm going to ask you, what is your purpose in the fight? What is your goal? Plug the leak. Like, stop these, whatever these things are from continuing to appear. Perfect. All right. Is that everybody's purpose? Is everybody on the same page with that? Or does anybody have a different purpose? Calder, you're on the same page? Yeah. McGann, same page? Yep. Uh, Wally? Yep. And Robin? I really want to have a different purpose, but I think he's going to drop into bit get it get the job done mode, which just Perfect. seems more appropriate. Yeah, all business. All right, so that gets you another team in the pool. Does any team member I love this one mistrust the leader or the team? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so working our way down the list, McGann, do you mistrust the leader or the sorry, not McGann, Calder? Do you mistrust the leader or the team? No, McGann. Of course not. And. Connor, this still goes to you because you can mistrust the rest of the team, even though you're the leader. So, Connor? Do I mistrust me or the team? Everybody else, if they mistrust you as the leader, that hits this. That's a yes, and that's all we need is one yes for this condition to be true. Oh, well, yeah, uh, On your matter. part, <laughs> if you're like, I'm leading, but also I really don't trust this team that I'm working with. That's still no, I, 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 I don't mistrust the team Perfect. Like as a whole. I don't. Wall- Wally, do you mistrust the leader or the team? No, I'm good. But... Robin. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> All right. Robin says, oh yes. oh, yes. So I can't not do that yet. I mean, I have and to. And that's why we to. will fail. That's perfect. <laughs> because you're not a good leader choice. <laughs> I don't say that in character. Wait, that's why we'll fail. So what happens here is we, we remove a team from the pool because somebody mistrusts the leader of the team. We remove one. However, as leader, you, Connor, can choose to mark a condition to prevent that. Uh, I get angry. Excellent. So go ahead and mark angry, <laughs> and we do not remove a team from the pool. Done. I love how, I don't even think he finished the question before Ishan started to say, I get angry. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been, for like 20 minutes, I've been like, how can I get angry? I gotta do something so I can get angry. Yes. <laughs> Problem solved. And Done. finally, is your team ill-prepared or off balance? Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and just say, I don't think you are right now. Like, even though theoretically you were here to a vacation, you snapped into team mode, you snapped into business mode. You're a little bit emotionally off balance, but you know what you're doing. And you weren't surprise attacked. You, you've had a moment, you reconnoitered, like, I think you're not off balance. So you have a total of five team in the pool. I will call out moments that this is helpful, but basically this is what you can spend to help each other out when you're doing stuff and do super cool team maneuvers. So I will cool. try to, I'll pay attention for when that can actually uh, be useful, and that's when I'll explain all right, so the bioship zooms in at high speeds towards the place from which these people are emerging, and you find yourself sort of maneuvering down into a crevasse further down below Poseidonis, deeper into the water. And there's only so far you can go with the bioship without it becoming dangerous. So Calder, I'd be interested to know like, if you want to just park it, and get out, that's perfectly fine. If you want to put the bioship even further in, you can drive it in, but then it's dangerous, it's risky. I think I want to take the danger. I think I want to try it. Excellent. Okay, so I'm going to treat this as unleashing your powers driving the ship, and because a lot of this has to do with your own reflexes, your own knowledge of the water, and everybody's sort of bonded to the ship. So I'm going to ask you to go ahead and roll plus freak to get the ship in the deeper parts of the crevasse. Okay. And does Rich have a thing for this or after? After. Okay. So that is a a lovely seven, unless this is related to the question I asked about what's most dangerous, but then it's still just an eight. So Excellent. Okay. I think right now it's a little bit off because this is specifically about trying to get the ship into the crevasse. Okay. So it's a seven, and that means same thing goes to you. You can either mark a condition as you're basically like, you are freaking out, but by freaking out, you are so careful and you get the ship down in there. Or I could tell you how it's unstable or temporary. Unstable or temporary, please. Great. Okay. Sorry, McGann. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Bioship. You get the ship down in there. 
through the crevasse, but on the way, it's really tight quarters and it's tough to maneuver and you wind up scraping a piece of the crevasse. It doesn't damage the ship, but Ugh. pieces of it fall in and around you. There's no way back out the way you came. Oh no, great. But the good news is the bio ship gets right down in there into like this deep part where there's the ocean floor beneath you, the fallen rocks above you essentially creating now a cave, for lack of a better description. And what is clearly the opening of a Zeta tube down here under the water from which these black suited figures are emerging. Wow. Okay. What? Okay. Yes. <laughs> you are in this now suddenly formed cave, essentially deep under the water, the Zeta tube beneath you, these black suited figures pouring out of it. Of course, like one of them pops into existence and notices the giant ship above illuminated in the light of the Zeta tube. And that one starts leaping up through the water, like slicing through it straight towards the bio ship. So we're sort of getting into an action scene. And as a GM, what I do in the action scene is I sort of shine the camera around as editor, where where's the cool place? And I try to stick with the moment until we reach a cool resolution place and move on. But also to make it make sense, I'm sort of going to flip around a little bit akin to rounds in D&D. And like, I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go here and then I'm going to go here and just work my way down. So... The first thing I want to do is get a good picture of what each of you are doing right this second, and then I'm going to start popping around to zoom in on those specific actions. Calder, what are you doing right this second? Like, what is your general thing that you're trying to do? Assuming the bioship will be okay without my being at its controls, I, I think Calder wants to leap out of the ship and go directly engage with this black-suited dude and figure him out. Perfect. And okay. also probably take him down, if possible. So you are going to shoot yourself out of the bioship at the guy coming in. Perfect. Yep. Megan, what are you doing? Well, I open the hatch so that Calder and anybody else can get out. Thank you. And then I dive in after Calder and go mermaid form, gills, tail, that whole thing, and dive in after him. Perfect. Are you headed for the black suited figure? Or are you going to head toward the Zeta tube? I think portal, I think Calder's or? got the black suited figure, so I'll head towards the Zeta portal. Perfect. I'll take that down. Connor, what about you? He'll leap in after them, but. Like he's also speaking as he's going. And you just sort of tell me which one of these may work or not. He's sort of accessing his Wikipedia in his head and going, are Zeta tubes outside of Poseidonis? Is that normal or is that super weird? And also, how do you break a Zeta tube? And then to Calder, as he's like going down with like McGann and Calder like, is this normal? Is this supposed to be here? As they're like heading straight toward this guy and presumably other people showing up. You know what I picture? I picture like in Calder's head, there's like a search string. And there's like a quick fill that said, like as soon as he puts in H, it fills in, how do I break a blank? <laughs> like, this is the first thing he's always searching for right when he puts the H in. That's amazing. And just to fill that in, because I feel like this is common knowledge that would be fine for you all especially. You know, after what you said, Calder, no, Zeta tubes should not be able to form down here. There are protections that should keep the area generally safe. Mm -hmm. um, this is not a normal thing. This is this is definitely outside of anything that should be happening. If Connor does ask, <laughs> Calder goes, most certainly not, and then jumps through the, the tube. <laughs> nice. The hatch. Awesome. Awesome. Wally, what me. are you doing? So I, I so I'm yeah, I'll just say it, and if nobody likes it, I'll say something else. So my idea is to look at uh look over to Dick and say, maneuver ten. And Essentially, what I yes. you know, because we have no idea what the maneuvers actually are. It's helping <laughs> someone who couldn't travel the r same way as the rest of the team. Because theoretically, with Connor's super strength, McGann can change into an aquatic form. Aqualad has the ability to swim at a faster speed. I can, of course, just sw swim faster. I don't want Robin to be left behind because he can't swim. So I'm yeah. going to, I don't know, underhook the arms and get ready That's to swim awesome. with you. So what I was picturing for myself was that Robin's got one of those scuba outfits uh, that as soon as you hit the water, the feet actually extend out. It has like uh, mm -hmm. fins that are automatic as soon as they hit water. And then he's got some kind of like probably a small pack that's got like, you know, it's got like a little bit of a jet on it that he can move. Sure. So he can maneuver pretty well, but not nearly as good as, as Wally, just even just kicking his feet, much less any other craziness. He's going to do down there. So, yeah, I'm in. I'm in. Absolutely. 
Yeah, and essentially I'll just drop you off wherever you want to go. That's that's adorable. <laughs> Sweet. And I'm sure Zatanna's like got some magical craziness and she can be present around there somewhere. Or she can stay with the ship. Yeah, actually, that's a fair point. Yeah, because somebody should stay with the ship just in case. So she's going to stay and yeah. man the ship while you're all diving out. And she can also do crazy magic to pull our butts out as a backup if needed. Yeah. And Wally, you are where are you headed? Uh, as you're diving out of the ship and zipping through the water. I'm going to just generally be headed towards where the Zeta tube is, but take any instruction in terms of where Robin would want to be dropped off. Because I know he'll have something crazy that I probably won't be directly involved in. So I think Wally and Dick think technically, like uh, technologically, a lot alike, obviously, because they worked together in the first season to do a lot of stuff. So... I think both of their, their they kind of just look at each other and it's like, yeah, let's shut that Zeta tube down first and let the other guys take care of everything else. So let's go do that. So I think I think I'm I'm right there with you. Perfect. Okay. So so it sounds like basically McGann, Connor, Wally, and Dick are headed towards the Zeta tube portal and they're letting Calder punch this uh, incoming guy in the face. Oh yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. So you're all zipping around and it's actually really obvious as as he's shooting up right he's not paying attention to anybody else he's more than happy to fixate on the enemy that's fixated on him as he's shooting up like and this this feeling of he's not obeying tactics he's not like defend the tube he's like <laughs> it seems to be the emphasis yeah so i, w- I want to see that the two of you are like colliding right in the water <laughs> uh, in front of the bio ship as the other four are going around and is this just a straight up punch, Aqualad, or are you doing something else to get him? I'm I'm back in my element, so I'm going to pull out one of these, you know, magical watery weapons. So I'd like to pull out, you know, I, I think he can do kind of a whip thing, can't he? Oh, yeah, yeah, whatever absolutely. you want. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I think he's going to try to uh, jerk the assailant toward him with the with the whip and and then punch him. Punch him. Excellent. Okay. Ideally. So this is absolutely directly engaging a threat and the thing i want to call out with that is directly engage a threat is when you are focused more than anything else on hurting taking down breaking the enemy if you're trying to get him out of the way if you're trying to get him to pay attention to you if your focus is on like anything that's more manipulating it's probably not directly engaging a threat but if, okay. if you're just slugging it out and you're like i want to take oh, yeah. this guy down it's directly engaging threat so go ahead and roll plus danger <laughs> Real bad. Uh-oh. Real bad, guys. Aqualad is uh, having a rough oh, day. No. Roll plus uh, danger. Yeah, I got a three. Oof. How does how okay. does team work? How does team work, Brendan? This is a great time to get into that. Okay. <laughs> so, team is how you help each other and boost up these rolls. Each point of team can be spent for a plus one on a roll. But the way it works is a teammate has to spend that point, do something that actually can help. Like, if they're on the other side of the world, they can't actually help, right? They have to actually be able to assist and do something in the fiction that helps. And each of you can only, by default, spend one. So all of you can spend on the same roll, but that means all of you have to help, and no one of you can spend more than one. So, for instance, for this, this is a three. To make it a hit, it has to become a seven. So for that to happen, every single one of the teammates has to spend one team out of the pool, do something to help, and then it would be a seven. The thing is, you only have, at the moment, five team in the pool. And so that would rip it down to one left. So, I mean, there's a tactics mm. thing here, and if you can come up with a way to help, everybody can and, and is welcome to. But it sort of is one of those situations where if any one of you decides it's not worth it, None of you should do it. There's no point in any of you spending team in the pool mm-hmm. to help if not all of you are going to help right now. So, I mean, that's a quick decision. Do you do you want to help? Is anybody going to help? I think KF and, and Dick are probably way too far away. Great. Okay. So, this is a miss. The good news in masks is on a miss. You get to market potential, which is what you need in order to advance. Five potential and you get an advancement. So, there's always this nice little consolation prize. The bad news is I get to tell you what happens. So, you send out that water whip you wrap it around him and you yank him up and you go to punch him 
and his hand just grabs your fist as it's coming in and stops it cold. Ooh. Conclude Mask's actual play. Story arc title, Relations, Episode 2, Episode 3, T-7 minus seven Days. You've been listening to Whelmed, the Young Justice Files podcast. Our hosts are Rich Howard and Emily Booza. Our editor and producer is Neil Powell. Our theme was composed by Emily Mio. Our logo was created by Kevin Bates. Whelmed is a fan-made podcast and is not officially affiliated with DC Comics, DC Entertainment, Warner Brothers Animation, and any other owners of Young Justice or its related source material. As such, these companies have sole ownership of all symbols, images, names, logos, and proprietary material related to Young Justice. Original content of this podcast is ours under Creative Commons. Thanks for listening, and stay whelmed.